Good evening. A woman from Nottinghamshire who was conned out of £500 says she's angry and ashamed at being the victim of a scam. Around 13 million people in Britain have been scammed, with the average person losing over £400. Well, two-fifths of people who have been defrauded say they had suspicions at the time, but they ignored their gut feeling. In a moment, we'll be getting advice on how to stay clear of scamming. But first, Jane Hesketh reports. 84-year-old Zelia Tunnicliffe breeds Norfolk Terriers on a small scale from her home near Newark in Nottinghamshire. She got an call from a company called Wyvern Media based in Derby, asking if she wanted to advertise her dogs for sale in their publication. And they weren't going to take no for an answer. And he went on and on and on. And I'm busy and thinking, oh, for goodness sake. And I said, how much? And he said, £25. And I said, what about that? Well, we said, no VAT, £25 straight, you see. And, and he went on chatting. I said to him, all right, OK, I'll advertise them just once. But I, I mean, I never usually advertise because it was by word of mouth, you see. Anyway, when my bank statement came, it was £48. And I thought, that's a bit odd. So I rang. I said to him, I want to stop this. You're not, you know, you didn't tell the truth and I don't want to do it anymore. And he said, well, it's good adver advertising and it's good this. And I said, no, I don't want to do it. And he said, well, you're a stupid old woman. You see? So I put the phone down. But that wasn't the end of it. More £48 sums came out of Zelia's bank account without her permission, totalling £500. Her bank put a stop to it, but when she tried to get her money back from Wyvern Media, the buck was constantly passed. I was very, very angry and also ashamed. Ashamed of the fact that I had been scammed. Me. Because I thought, you know, I'm with it. And I, I've watched money all my life. I've been careful. But I was really, really angry. But more shame than anything. That's why I never told the boys or anyone. Zelia was determined not to let it go and contacted Trading Standards and the police. It turned out she wasn't the only one scammed by the company. The owner, Jonathan Rivers, and a number of his employees were jailed in October for fraud. Research published today by banking group Santander found that a quarter of British adults, that's 13 million people, had given their bank details or email addresses to fraud businesses. And Zelia says it's easy to be taken in. They're quite articulate and they're quite persuasive and they have, well, for want of a better word, a gift of the gap, don't they? And we tend to listen to them. How often do we pick the phone up and somebody says something and I think you don't want to know this? You listen, but then you try to say to them, no, I don't want this. But they go on and on and on. And in the end, you have to put the phone down. Older people who live alone are most at risk from scammers. Zelia's very self-reliant and capable, but this experience has made her cautious and wary. Jane Hesketh, ITV News, near Newark in Nottinghamshire. Well, joining us is David Clark, the director of the Fraud Advisory Panel. David, thank you for joining us. Um, we've just seen a report there of an, a, how easily an 83-year-old can be scammed. Is this kind of case quite typical? Uh, yes, it is. And, and sadly, um, we're seeing more and more of these kind of, uh, these kind of scams and approaches to people. Uh, I'd just like to point out that Zelia, um, incredible lady, and what a lovely response, the way she handled this, very controlled. Um, sadly, many people, this isn't the case. Uh, and and they, 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 when they get hit by fraud, enormous problems. They're not uh, as controlled as Zelia. And this is the type of people that frauds to target, and it's a huge problem. Fraud today, uh, you know, is, is our number one most prevalent crime in the UK. It's enormous. Well, let's, let's explore that a little bit more, because you spoke about Celia being a strong lady. Um, and we know the obvious symptoms of being scammed is that you lose money, but there are yeah. physical symptoms as well, aren't there, and, and it, effects it, of it. Can you it tell is. us a little bit more about that? It, it is. Losses in, in uh, financial terms can be, well, they may be small, but these could be enormous for some people, a, a small loss, enormous, for, uh, uh, enormous losses that uh, could affect somebody's life, uh, life savings, uh, their pension. 
people, it's that emotional harm as well, the enormous feelings of letting people down, uh, of being stupid. Uh, we know from some of the latest research today uh, that people, you know, they start suspecting that there's something wrong when they've been lulled into a, a scam. Um, but it really hurts confidence. People are frightened to report. We've even had awful cases in, in my years as, a, uh, as a, a police officer investigating fraud. People committing suicide. They feel so embarrassed. Now, the heartless fraudster, they want this. They don't want you reporting, especially if they're here in the UK and we know who they are. They're hoping that people will be embarrassed and won't report. Well, what should you do then? If you do think you are being scammed or you've had phone calls from the same people, what should you do? Well, this is vitally important. Uh, at the Fraud Advisory Panel and the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau, my, my previous organisation, we are very clear about this. You know, when, whenever you're contacted, whether it's by telephone, in the street, uh, through emails, don't be pressured to give information out. Uh, Zelia was very good like that when she spotted the difference. Um, if you're getting pressure, people start asking personal information about your bank, your, your, your personal details. Actually, we've got to try and be, I know we're very polite as British people, and that's, that's something we don't want to change, but politely say, sorry, no, I'm not giving you that. And actually, who are you again? I'll call you back. Call your bank back if they're saying they're the bank or, or, or the police, whoever they might be pretending to be, and call them back on the number you have. Uh, politely hang up, don't keep the line open. If you have suspect that somebody's trying to, uh, to defraud you, uh, and, and this research has shown that, people get that gut feeling, again, don't be embarrassed, please, you know, get it reported. If it's, uh, if it's someone who's got your bank details, or you suspect they might, ring the bank and tell them. At least then they can start putting checks in place, blocks, and report to the police. Uh, the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau and the Action Fraud Service. Action Fraud is 24 hours a day. Uh, Actionfraud.police.uk. It's got a, a telephone helpline as well. Uh, just don't feel pressured into giving information uh, and, and report it. That's great advice, David Clark. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. The Duke of Cambridge swapped the cockpit for 